Hi, this is Josh Rubin from eastwesthealing.com. Um, today we're going to be talking about xenoestrogens and xenobiotics and what they are, the symptoms, and um, how to know if you're ingesting them um, and how to eradicate them. If you want to read more about these, you can go to our blog at http colon backslash backslash blog.eastwesthealing.com and you can read our recent newsletter or go to our website at eastwesthealing.com, sign up for our newsletter and you can receive a bi-weekly newsletter on the topics that we uh, put out. So what are xenoestrogens? Xenoestrogens are pretty much in a class of what's called a xenobiotic. A xenobiotic is a forward substance derived from petroleum oil that originates outside the human body, synthetic, has hormone-like and estrogen-like activity, increasing estrogen levels in the body, and thus a profound impact on hormone imbalance and causing dysfunction. The molecular structure of the petrochemicals contain the basic key to the hormone receptor, Hormone action thus behaving as estrogens, hence xenoestrogens. How does it concern you? It's pretty much you're in a, you're swimming and eating and living in an environment of xenobiotics and xenoestrogens. Um, the bottom line is it it's increased estrogen or being estrogen dominant causes cell proliferation, which has been known to cause cancer. It decreases what's called cell apoptosis, which is regeneration. Um, if you go to my blog, you can actually read more on the unwanted side effects of estrogen, but to keep it short, um, it doesn't really cause a lot of good things when out of balance with progesterone. Um, how does it get in the body? It gets in the body from herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, plastic bottles, plastic Tupperware, um, uh, oral intake from water, uh, bath water, um, um, pools, um, from nail polish, head dyes, Conventional foods, um, you name it, it's everywhere. It's in the water you're drinking and it's in the food you're eating uh, because most of these animals are given um, hormones, hormone replacement, they're given different antibiotics, they're given, they're fed genetically modified grains, they're fed dead animals, and on and on and on. When in the end, um, when you ingest them, it builds up in the body over time, which causes a hormone imbalance secondary to these xenobiotics. Um, other common um, places that they're in, they're typically in um, waste from sewage plants, synthetics drugs like the pill, estrogens, or progestins. They're found in all plastics, like I said. Um, they're found in emulsifiers and waxes, in candles, as well as soaps and cosmetics, which is huge. And found, like I said, in solvents such as nail polish, but also glue such as maybe the envelope or stamp that you're licking, okay? What are, the, what are the, some of the things you can reduce the xenobiotics or xenoestrogens in your environment? First thing, go green. Secondly, buy Pyrex glassware. Drink out of stainless steel bottles. Um, eat organic free-range meats that are grass-fed. Cows have four stomachs to, to digest cellulose from grass. That's it. They're not meant to eat corn, grains, anything else. That, that's what causes so much sickness. Um, and they have to be killed after six months because they're so acidic, they have ulcers and die. Um, chickens are meant to eat uh, um, their herbivores and carnivores. They're not meant to sit and just uh, eat grains, genetically modified grains, soy, corn, and things like that. So make sure you, your um, chickens are free range, same thing with the eggs, but they're not just fed grains and high omega-3s because they're not meant to just eat grains. What else can you do? Um, you can heat things up on the stove instead of using plastic Tupperware. Heat things up in a toaster oven instead of using plastic Tupperware. Um, for kids bottles, that's a that's a toss up, but the bottom line is don't microwave your kids formula, which you should be breastfeeding in anyway if you can, but don't microwave the formula in a plastic bottle in the microwave. Um, that's definitely a no-no. Um, those are some of the things that we recommend. Uh, once again, eat out of Pyrex go organic, heat things up in toaster ovens, use stainless steel water bottles or take your water out of your plastic water bottle and start refilling them or use polypropylene um, or install a uh, water filtration system on your house or your sink and showers. Um, what are some of the symptoms that people uh, pretty much um, have from xenoestrogen imbalance or hormone imbalance, infertility, PMS, amenorrhea, dysmenorrhea, uh, cancers, Weight gainer in the stomach, thighs, and buttocks. Those are where the estrogen receptors are, thighs and buttocks. Um, other common things are osteoporosis, miscarriage, um, lack of fertility, lack of libido, um, 
on and on and on and on. So if you have any, any of these symptoms, just be aware that you could possibly be ingesting or taking in a lot of xenoestrogens, which is contributing to your hormone imbalance. At the same time, you really have to think about it. A lot of women who are on hormone replacement because they've had surgical menopause or have an organ taken out because of some type of cancer um, or they've gotten older so they've gone through menopause, these all are essentially the same thing. The funny thing is our body actually, or women's bodies, produce a lot of other hormones, right? And there's research by Dr. John Lee, MD, that states typically um, as women go through so-and-so menopause, progesterone's pretty much dropped to zero, and estrogen actually you keep producing at about 40-50% because you produce estrogen in your fat cells and in your adrenal glands. So why are doctors giving estrogen only? Why not give women low doses of testosterone when they need it because of surgery? Or why are they not giving progesterone? Most women need progesterone. It's progestation. It supports fertility. It brings nutrients and oxygen to the female organs and to the fetus. You know, so it's really interesting that we're providing women with estrogens when they're still producing them, okay, because of excess fat in their adrenal glands, but they're not producing progesterone. So why aren't we giving them progesterone? So through the years, I've done saliva tests through biohealth diagnostics. There's many of them, as well as use my nutrition and lifestyle principles to educate women and teach them in order to balance their hormones using, using bioidentical hormones and different herbs. And within a six-month period, 12-month period, depending on how bad their hormones are, we have them in balance. Um, it's very rare that you would have to use a bioidentical estrogen. Typically, if they've had surgery, you would. But overall, in my opinion, from doing my research and studying the work of Dr. John Lee, MD, and other institutes such, the, such as the Institute of Functional Medicine, John Brady, um, that most women need progesterone. So if you have any other questions, feel free to visit our website, www.eastwesthealing.com. We have a lot of good resources and audio programs and PowerPoint presentations on our resource page. If you want to set up a free consultation, feel free to email us or call us, or um, you can find a lot of great information on our blog as well at blog.eastwesthealing.com. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.